The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Wheat School. Today I am near Rockwood, Ontario, catching up with Brad Garlow from Syngenta. How's it going? It's going great, Bernard. It's going great. Beautiful it's, day. And an awesome wheat field. And I want to talk about this wheat field. One thing I do not see is fusarium head blight. And, uh, you know, you've done a, the grower here has obviously done a nice job uh, on a not, lot of things, including application. And before I want to get into application here, talk about the value of keeping a field free of fusarium. And what type of impact are we looking at? So fusarium is normally the last pass in the wheat field, and it's a very crucial pass to keeping that head clean. And the head clean means more yield in your pocket, and it also means uh, no grade deductions at the elevator, because that could be very detrimental to the grower if there's a lot of fusarium in the sample. Yeah, and I want to talk about application. You mentioned before we got on here, you know, painting that head is so important. We've got to get it covered properly. And you've done a lot of research, a lot of application over the last few years, and more this year. And yep. uh, you know, you, you, a lot of the work this year reinforced some things you know. And you had some surprises in your research. And hey, let, let's talk about your work this year. And I want to first start with, with nozzles. How important is that nozzle selection? So it depends on the sprayer and it depends on a lot of other factors that the grower is using, what type of nozzle he or she should, should select. And uh, there's a lot of great options on the market and that one size doesn't fit all. And I think the only way you can do that is to test the nozzle that works best in your situation. And there's many factors that affect the nozzle selection. But I'd say the one nozzle that I've found that's worked really well is a 3D nozzle. So a forward and backward nozzle, but alternating side to side. Yeah. And it creates that wind tunnel that the air can get through it and it doesn't break that front plane of the spray nozzle. So right. And you get coverage on both sides. Correct, right? that's so, cru yeah, so crucial to cover both sides of the head so you get fusarium coverage. Mm -hmm. Talk about um, droplet size. I mean, like uh, we can fog on this stuff, but we can you know, have some big droplets. Where do we need to be? So with the last three years, I'd say that the biggest uh, surprise in my little bit of research that I've done is that amount of growers that are trying to fog on product and fog on sounds good when you're trying to get great coverage which is what we want with a fungicide but fog on doesn't work very well in this little bit of a breeze that we feel today yeah. or the 10 12 mile an hour speed that the sprayer is moving forward the fog doesn't go backwards fog just goes wherever the wind blows and and that's the problem with using fine droplets and that's the pre that's the the, uh, the opportunity to select the right nozzle to get the medium, or sorry, like coarse, even extra coarse nozzle or droplet sizes that a lot of growers don't think is the right uh, type, but it is, that's yeah. what you need. I wanna talk about pressure. You know, we're running the sprayer and uh, you know, what type of pressure we need to, to get that spray down into the canopy. You, uh, you had some wa water sensitive paper yep. this year, ran some uh, trials, learned a lot. You, you had 40 PSI versus 45 versus 50. What'd that's you learn? Right. So yeah, pressure and, and wind speed, I would say this year is what I really noticed is a big difference is the grower I worked with uh, on, on a day with about 10 mile an hour winds, maybe 12, so very calm day. Uh, pressure, you could drop it down real low, create a bigger droplet size and get great coverage. And then a couple of days later, I went and saw a grower, it's probably more in that 20, 25 mile an hour wind speed. And he was actually using too low of a pressure. So he wasn't getting any backside coverage from the speed and then the wind pushing it. So we actually upped his pressure to 45 and all of a sudden we started seeing droplets on the back side of the water sensitive paper or the back side of the head mm -hmm. from the water sensitive paper. So to say you always want to drop it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make that statement, but uh, it depends on what type of droplet size you have and then also how windy it is and how fast you're spraying, what type of pressure you need. But I would say that 40, 45 yeah. seems to be a good starting point and then you work your way out from there. And dropping some water sensitive paper down in the canopy and running over that, getting a sense of how it works is probably a, a good practice. I think it's the only way that you really know other than lots of guys look out the window and they think they see stuff that's happening and you can, you can tell fog versus large droplets, but you can't see what's covering yeah. the backside of the head. Let's talk uh, water volumes. I mean, I noticed in your trial here, you had 18 gallons, but yep. you know, 18, 20 uh, from an Ontario perspective, where does it fit? Uh, that's right in the, the spectrum we'd like to see. I think as a, a Syngenta statement would be 20 gallons, but we know guys that are running a thousand gallon tank, 18 gallons works really nice for three jugs of a 20 acre uh, product. So depends, but honestly 18, 20, and you do the right job with the right nozzle, it can work just fine. And what about speed? Um, that's another bit of a wild card with a few factors. Yes, so speed is, uh, can change the whole game. Uh, a lot of growers like that 10, 11 mile an hour. Some guys, if the rain's coming or they gotta get the acres pounded through, maybe get up to 12, 13, but then you start really starting to fight that backside coverage because your sprayer's moving forward and you're trying to make up that momentum. 
the slower you can go. And the other big thing that I find is the technology in these sprayers is awesome for keeping those booms about 18 inches. The lower, the better, assuming you get the coverage. Mm -hmm. But the faster you go, then you get these crazy, uh, crazy swings with the boom. And if you're up three, four feet from the canopy, let's be honest, you're not getting any coverage. It's just going straight down because gravity's grabbing those droplets and pulling them straight down. Yeah. Well, last thing I want to talk about, um, and that is technology. Um, we've, we, we've seen the John Deere Exact Apply and lots of other, you know, similar types of technology coming to the market. You know, how important is it, I guess, to understand your technology? And, and you know, it's amazing what you can do with the technology. Yeah, absolutely. The, the opportunities are endless with it. But uh, if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish with it, you can spend a lot of money on technology and, and not move any further ahead. Um, but with Exact Apply, having the opportunity to have two nozzles pulsating on the same um, nozzle body, so essentially you're running uh, 96 times two uh, nozzles on a 120 foot boom, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then also the opportunity for this grower I was working with to just uh, flip a button, change from 45 to 50 to 55 PSI and not have to change your speed at all, right? The old style, you'd have to change your speed and then you'd have to change your pressure. So. Uh, some cool different ways you can do things, do some tests and, uh, and change the, uh, the nozzle selection. And then the other big thing coming is obviously the narrower. We think back 20 years ago, 30 inches was pretty darn good uh, for nozzle spacing. Now we're down to 10 inches. And that just gets you closer and closer to that canopy, closer and closer to that target that you're trying to hit and you're still getting the, the coverage side to side. Yeah. Hey, final thing, and you were talking, speaking of new technology, you say, hey, you know, anybody, anytime you buy a sprayer now, yeah. I mean, the nozzles, nozzles are, are so important. Uh, why not, when you when you buy your spare, get out a bag of nozzles and uh, and, and see what works? Absolutely, sense? absolutely. Like, I, the coolest project I did was with a grower last year, and we had four different types of nozzles on a brand new Rogator that he bought, and we ran over uh, three or four passes with the four different nozzles, and we just looked at the analysis, and he was driving very slow with 20 gallons of water, so a very unique situation and 10-inch spacing, and then best nozzles for him wasn't the best nozzles for the guy that I went and saw the next day that was on 15 inch and driving at a higher speed. So you spend the money on the sprayer, mm -hmm. they're not getting any cheaper. They're not even that easy to find these days, yeah. but uh, spend some time, select the right nozzle, and then buy that nozzle for all 96 yeah. instead of just picking the one that uh, came on the sprayer. Brad, some awesome application tips. Hey, thanks for taking the time and uh, in a great weed field on the weed school. Looking forward to harvest.